Welcome back to Snack Cast, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> All right. So today we're continuing on with um, today is race day prep. Yeah. Like today's the big day. All months ago, work. you yeah. signed up, you trained. Never thought this day would come. Did you, you? did your pre-race prep. So your week before you tapered off, you watch what you ate. Yep. So going to bed the night before or even waking up. How does it begin? Right. When you wake up. Oh, for me, oh gosh, probably an hour. It depends on if there's travel time. But if there is travel time aside, you know, you don't want to have too much time because then you're sitting around. Sitting around doing nothing. Sitting right. around doing nothing. And, and there's nothing worse than that, right? Like getting to the event too early and then you're just yeah. pacing. Yeah. Because you have that, I don't care how well you train, you're still going to have that anxiety of like, let's go. You want it. You want to stretch. You want to warm up a little bit. You know, do some bouncing around, whatever. You right. Know. So that's tough, right? So my guess would be, and then you got the other aspects of like, do you eat before? Do you not eat before? Do you have? Depends on on what the event is. I would say your smaller events, your typical five k. I don't think you have to worry about nutritional whole heck of a lot. Before no. The event. Well, all right. So hang on, hang on. You're jumping to to like maybe breakfast, but if you're gonna wake up, I'm talking about from a time. Perspective. You need to tack on a certain amount of time for. It's gonna be crazy, even if it's a small event and a hundred people. It's a hundred people still trying to park as close as they can, right, to the start line, finish line. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, add a buffer, I guess, for your travel time. Um, you don't want to be getting there trying to rush, right? Um, and to your point, you're going to eat something. Maybe you're going to want to swing through Starbucks. Anything near the event is going to be busier than a regular day. That's correct. Right? Especially your big events. My goodness, everyone's trying to pee or poop at McDonald's before they get down there. Right. Right. So take all that kind of into account that whatever your your normal time frame would be, you got to tack on for a variety of elements, but you don't want to tack on too much to your point. Right. Right. So, you know, like the wake up time, you have to figure out, all right, am I going to eat normally? How soon after I wake up did I use the restroom? Uh, if I am going to eat breakfast, how is that going to affect my workouts? And, you know, there's an old saying, um, nothing new on race day. And that means no new sneakers. That means no new diet. That means no new nothing because nothing new on race day. This is, you've done this all along, stick to it. Shorts you've already ran in, you shirt you've it. already ran in. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, definitely not new socks. You're Blisterville. Yes. Everything Blister. And, you know, we didn't talk about that, like the body glide and that type of stuff. You know, you know you're going to want to prep and make sure you have that for chafing or any of that type of Dude, stuff. Dude, and for the viewer, if you've never looked up, bleeding nipples oh, on race day my goodness it is horrible oh you see these poor people you know we're talking about half marathons and marathons here when they cross the finish line and if you're one of those people make sure it's you mostly wear. dudes i mean because let's be honest we don't wear bras right and this the constant up and down of the shirt it's like 600 grit sandpaper for an hour two hours but Again, for the most part, the, you shouldn't be figuring that out on race day. Right. If you have done your proper training and you're out running for two hours during the course of a week, you will have known that you will tend to chafe and to maybe do spots. something about it. Yeah. All right. So waking up, getting your food in. Checking the weather. Um, yes. Check the weather on race day. That's a great point because you might need a poncho, um, you know, to, to, whatever you do bring. I guess the most important thing is make sure it's disposable. Don't bring your best jacket. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, we talked about the rock and roll marathon that we yeah. did and how many people left their clothing around afterwards and it gets picked up for homeless people, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, like you said, you won't get it back. You're not getting Unless it back. You're, you're not going to go find it on the course after you're done. Yeah. And it stinks to carry anything while you're running. Yeah. I agree. You know, the, so that brings up something. Um, longer events, you know, not necessarily your 5K, but um, any kind of nutritional supplementation, you want to make sure that you packed a little fanny pack or 
Some people wear the arm bags. The, the, the you, you, water hydration systems and that type of stuff. Again, I think that any of that stuff should be understood well in advance. You've yeah. done enough training that matches up with the event that you're about to do that you shouldn't be figuring this out on race day. You should be ready to go. No cramming. Have we said that before? Yeah, we have said that quite a few times. Um, so the supplements, those are things like goo or Gatorade or any of those type of gel packs. And again, your longer events. But a lot of the events, you can that's the other thing you can check, right? Make sure a lot of the longer events have the, the water stops on the course. They have bananas out on the course or they have any of those... Uh, we have a good friend that did his first full triathlon. Mm -hmm. You remember, um, Jamie? And he mentioned they had a thing of M&Ms, I think it was, in the middle of the road at some point towards the end. And he was just like, ha! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it was whatever he could get in him. Right. You know. Um, so, but that's that's a really long event. You know? Yeah. So, um, you know, waking up, allow for time. I think that probably the the big one to me is not to be disgusting, but it's the poop pee, right? <laughs> I don't want to do it in a portalette. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I mean, you don't you don't want to stop in the middle of your run and find a portalette, right? That is or a bush. Yeah, there's nothing worse than that. You know, I mean, so like, whatever your normal routine is for me, it's fit. pretty straightforward. Couple cups of coffee. <laughs> and I'm off to the races. Um, but whatever your routine is, incorporate that into your morning. I can't believe we're talking about poop. <laughs> Try and get that out. I'm just saying, <laughs> just saying there's nothing It's worse. real. It's real, and you don't want to use the portalette. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is not. It's ho horrendous. So, all right, dude, we've been, like, all over the place in this yeah, one. But it was um, good. It was, yeah, it was. You know, so really, I guess it's all about trying to plan best you can, take the knowns and account for them. The unknowns, they're well, they're unknown. They yeah. are what they are. You know? But have fun. This is what you train for. Yeah, man. So questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, snackcast at yes.fit. Um, hit us up in the group. And other than that. Keep moving. See ya. <laughs>